Let's see how this is done with an example. We'll start by entering the URL of the website, which is www.dtv2009.gov. This website contains a lot of useful information. It is recommended that you have a closer look later on. We're going to go to option 3, which is apply for a coupon. Click there. A new page will open and the first thing that you'll see is the 90 day expiration date warning. We will now enter the first and last name of the user requesting the coupons followed by the street address. Lastly, we will enter the city name, the state, and the zip code. If the USPS does not deliver mail to the above address, you need to check that box. Now, of these two options, you need to select the one that most closely resembles real life. We will scroll down a little. Now it's asking how many coupons do you want, one or two? I will select two. Lastly, you need to sign it and you sign it by checking this box, which also indicates that all information is true. Now you need to type in that deformed text that you see there and you need to enter it into this text box which I am doing now. Lastly, you click the submit button. This might take a few minutes. Patience please. If all went well, I should be receiving my coupons in approximately six weeks. The coupons resemble credit cards. It is important to read the indications that come with the coupons. Now that I have the converter box, how do I install it? Let's have a look at one of these converter boxes. This converter box is by Insignia. The small buttons are to select channels and the big button is to turn on and off the converter box. The rear panel has two RF connectors. The first one is connected to the antenna and the second one is connected to the TV. Next you have the composite output. If your television has composite, use this instead of the RF. And lastly is the AC cord that connects to the AC outlet. To install it, the antenna is connected to the converter, then the converter is connected to the TV, making sure that the TV is on the channel reserved for the converter box. Now the converter is connected to the AC power outlet, and finally the remote control is checked to confirm that it has batteries installed. This was an example of a basic and generic installation. Reading the user's guide is recommended. Many, if not all, of the converter boxes must be configured before their first use. Here is a configuration example for the Insignia converter box that was shown in the video. This process may be different for other brands and models. To begin the configuration process, turn on the converter box and then the TV. If the installation was done correctly, a welcome screen should show on the TV. Go to the next step by pressing the button on the remote that corresponds to the next action. Again, it is recommended that the user's guide be read to resolve any doubts. The next screen allows the user to select the language of choice. I left it with English selected. To select another item, use the corresponding up-down buttons on the remote. Press the next button on the remote when done. The next screen allows the user to select the TV type. There are two types available normal 4 to 3 and widescreen 16 to 9. If this is just a normal TV, select normal 4 to 3. The next step informs us that the converter box is ready to search for channels. Press the corresponding button on the remote to begin scanning. An orange progress bar along with the channel number will be displayed to indicate that the scanning is in progress. Once the scanning is complete, the next screen is displayed. This allows the user to select the time zone. The continental US has four time zones plus Alaska and Hawaii. The user should select the correct one for his or her geographical location. The date and time are configured automatically. The user can only verify if they are correct. Once the time zone has been selected, we move on to the next screen, which just tells us that the configuration is complete and tops it off with a thank you. Pressing the next button on the remote removes the last screen. The TV should now be displaying a digital channel. So now that I have the converter box, now what? To watch TV, first turn on the converter box followed by the TV. 
verify that the TV is on the channel reserved for the converter box. If it isn't, there will be no image on the TV. Select a channel to view using the converter box's remote control. The volume is adjusted using the remote control for the TV. Sun converter box remote controls can be programmed to also control the TV. Consult your converter box user's guide to see if that is possible and if so, how to do it. As with everything, there can also be problems. Let's compare an analog TV with a digital TV. If the TV signal is weak, we usually get snow on an analog TV. Something different happens on a digital TV. Instead of snow, the image looks like it's made out of a lot of blocks. This is called pixelization. If the signal is weak, we are most likely to get noise or static on an analog TV. A digital TV will simply blank out bad audio, leaving a gap of silence. Here is a sample of video that was received using a converter box. The digital signal was not very good. Note the pixelization and the gaps in the sound. If you think all batteries are the same, consider this. When even the fire to get out, impacted is the only trust, Duracell, trusted. What can be done to fix this problem? First off, use a different, more powerful antenna. A friendly chat with the neighbors on how they solve this problem helps too, assuming they also use a converter box. Asking tech support at the local electronics store might also be helpful. This problem is frequently solved by moving the antenna or changing its orientation or installing an outdoor antenna. This all depends how close your home is to the transmitting tower. Thank you for watching.